Yo, what up? Welcome back to the Flutter authentication tutorial. In the last one, we created the UI for this modern login screen. So in this tutorial, let's hook it up to Firebase and allow users to sign in with their email and password. Now, the very first thing we need to do is to go to your Firebase console and make sure to sign in with your email so that we can now create a new project. And for this one, I'm just gonna call it Auth Tutorial. And let's hit continue. And let's just disable this Google Analytics just for simplicity and let's create the project. Cool, now once that's done, we now need to add Firebase to our app. And by the way, I'm going to link this Firebase documentation below because this is essentially what I'm gonna to explain to you in this tutorial. I'll link it below so you can take a closer look at it. So it says here, before you begin, if you haven't already, follow the steps in the get started guide. So let's just open that in a new tab. And even for this, we have another prerequisite, which is to connect your app to Firebase. So we're gonna to need to install and initialize the Firebase SDK for Flutter. And then if you go to this one, most of this you hopefully should have already done. Like you have an editor like VS Code and you've installed Flutter. And just then you should have signed into Firebase using your Gmail. And the most important thing to do here is the Firebase CLI. So the command line tools. If you haven't already installed the Firebase CLI. And so just depending on your platform, right? So what machine are you using? Let's say I'm using a Mac and there's three different ways to install it. Which if you actually read this recommended for, if you're a new developer, just use this first method just to make it easy. Um, but if you do have familiarity with Node.js, then you can use this NPM as well. So just copy this and put it in your command line and make sure to install this Firebase CLI. Cool, so once you've done that, let's just close this and we've installed the Firebase CLI. Now let's just make sure everything's all good. We have to log in using the Firebase login. So let's copy this and let's go to our code now. So this is the modern login UI that we created in the last video. So I'll link that below as well. So make sure to check that out first because we're gonna build on from this UI. And so in this project, in your terminal, let's put in Firebase login. So we're gonna make sure we're logged into our Gmail as it says like that. And then what's the next step? Then we can copy this. And looks like we have a slight warning. And I think this is a Mac only warning. So it says you can fix by adding this bit of code. Let's just put that in. And then if everything has been done correctly, we should be able to do this Flutter Fire configure. And there we go. So it's gonna fetch the Firebase projects. And you can see these are the projects that I have in that Gmail. So you can see the auth tutorial is the one we just created. Which platforms should your configuration support? It says use arrow keys and space to select. And if you hit enter, I think it will just do all of them. So I just hit enter. So it will set up the Android, the iOS, uh, the web. This, you actually had to do it manually before, but thanks to the Flutterfy CLI, we can do this all seamlessly and it's all automated. Cool, so it wants to update the build.gradle, so just say yes, and we're good. So let's go back to our Firebase project. And remember, we had to connect our app to Firebase, right? So if I just refresh this real quick, You can see those three apps, so the iOS, the Android and the web, it just got added automatically. So that's good. So now the rest of the work is gonna require us to do some actual code. So let's just copy this and let's add the package Firebase Core. Cool, that's done. And by the way, what we just did is if you go to your pubspec.yaml, this is where we sort out the packages, right? So that terminal command automatically added the Firebase core. It looks like it says here the Flutter Fire configure is step two, which we have already done. So yeah, this is just gonna do the same thing. So we already did this. And you can see step three says in your main.dart file, we're going to import these packages at the top. And so the Firebase options, it should be a auto-generated file, which helps us just to deal with which platform we're on. So if you go to your main function, we're going to add this snippet of code. So the Flutter binding, 
and also the Firebase Initialize app. And so for the options you can see here, we can just select the current platform. Cool, and if everything has been done good, if we hit Flutter Run, hopefully there's no issues. Uh, if you do have issues, then that means there's something wrong with the setting up. Okay, sweet, so now we can actually do some code. So if you go to our login page, remember these two text editing controllers? We have the username and the password text field controllers. And we also had this method which we didn't fill out, which is the sign-in method, right? So if you scroll down, where's my button? This one, so if I tap on this, then we're going to execute this sign-in method, which currently is blank. And so this is what this tutorial is gonna focus on filling out this method. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new page called auth page. And so this is just going to be a stateless widget. And we're going to use this to check if the user is signed in or not. Because if the user isn't signed in, then we have to display the login page. And if they are signed in, then we're going to display a home page. So we're going to use this auth page to decipher between the two. Okay, so in the scaffold in the body, we're going to use something called a stream builder. And we're going to check for some users. And the stream that we're going to be listening to is the Firebase auth, which, whoops, I just remembered I didn't, I forgot to import the Firebase auth package. So let's just do that. Flutter pub add Firebase auth. Cool. And again, just to show you what we just did, if you go to your PubSpec YAML, it should have added this package automatically. Cool. So now that's done, we should be able to import that library and we can start dealing with Firebase auth. So you can see this stream is going to constantly be listening to the auth state changes. In other words, if the user is logged in or not. So then we can build something and with the help of this snapshot, we can say, is the user logged in? Is the user not logged in? So if the snapshot has data, then we have some user. So let's return our home page. Else, let's return the login page. And this home page we obviously haven't created, so let's just do that real quick. And let's just keep this simple in the middle. Let's just say logged in. Cool, and if you come back to the main.dart file, my main function executes my app, which at the very beginning goes to the login page, but let's change this to the auth page. Okay, so we're gonna fire up the auth page at the beginning, and then it's gonna check by listening to the stream if the user is logged in or not. Cool, now if you come back to our documentation, we can close this now and come to the actual main documentation we want to use for this video. So we've got everything set up. And if you just scroll down, signing in a user with an email and password is what I'm going to show you today. Cool. So if you come back to our Firebase console, let's hit authentication and get started. And if you go to the email method, just make sure to enable this and save it. Cool. And in the users, Let's create a user manually. So I'm just gonna call it test at gmail.com and the password can be test123. Cool, so we have our first user. Okay, so let's come back to the login page and let's finally fill out this sign user in method. So we're going to await Firebase auth. And if you look in the method, you should be able to see a sign in with email and password. And this is going to require us to provide an email and password, which we have these controllers from before. And just to keep it nice and consistent, instead of username, let's rename this to email. And give the controller and the password to these fields. And let's see what happens. So let's fill out the email, which is test at gmail.com. And my password was test123. And if I sign in, then sweet, we're signed in. Sweet, it works. And so now when the user's logged in, then they'll see this home page, which let's add an app bar and actually have a button so that the user can log out.
Right, so let's create this sign user out method. And this one is also very easy. You just need to say Firebase auth and sign out. Cool, now since we made that auth page, this should sort out the logging in and logging out. So let's give this a go. Cool, so if I hit the button, we just log out and come back to the login page. And so that's what this auth page dot dart is doing. Just to have some more information about the user, let's create a user. And just get the current user. And let's say logged in as the user's email. And let's just display the user's email like that. And maybe let's make it a bit bigger so you guys can see. Cool. All right, so the basic functionality is done. Now for the rest of the tutorial, I'm going to sort of have some good practices uh, when it comes to like UX, the user experience. So for example, like if we're signing a user in, it's gonna take a little bit of time. So let's show a loading circle. And to do that, we're gonna show a little dialogue. And by the way, to show a dialogue, it's actually gonna be easier to use a stateful widget, but I actually made this login page as a stateless widget. And I was thinking surely there's a way we could just convert a stateless widget to a stateful widget easily. And I looked it up and there actually is. So you can hover over the stateless widget and you can hit these commands. So I'm using VS code and on a Mac. So it looks like it's command dot and we can convert to stateful widget. Oh, sick. Sweet, so now that we can show a dialogue, we can have the context and we can show this loading circle finally. So in the center, let's just return a circular progress indicator. And let's see how this looks. Hey, there it is, but it's not going away. So at the very bottom, let's just pop the circle. And let's try it again. Cool, so you have the loading circle and then once you've signed in, let's pop the circle. Okay, looking good. Now, some other errors to take care of is what if the username is wrong? Like they enter a wrong email. Then it looks like we're just stuck on this loading circle, right? So with this sign in method, I'm just gonna copy this and we're going to try signing in. And if there's an error, let's catch the error. And let's just see what the error is. So if the error code is user not found, then for now, let's just print it to our console just to see what's going on. And if it's wrong password, then let's also print that to our console. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you in my terminal console right here. Let's put in a wrong email. And you can see, we can see what the error is. No user found for that email. And similarly, if we have a wrong password, so we got the email correct, but the wrong password, then we can see that error. So let's display this information to the user so that they know what the problem is. Okay, and just to keep the code clean, I'm just going to separate out these methods. So if it's a wrong email, let's just show a small alert dialog. And same thing for the password. And It looks like our loading circle is still persisting and that's because once we signed in, we should pop it and get rid of it at the end. And if we do have an error, then let's pop the circle and then display the appropriate error. Sweet, so you can see that little alert dialog to display the error and the user can just click anywhere to exit out of it. Sweet, so again, just coming back to the documentation, you can see this is the code that we actually implemented. So this is how you sign a user in with an email address and password.
but that's essentially it so that's all i had planned for this particular video just signing in with email and password in the next one let's actually create a user through our app so remember for this one we actually created the user manually on the firebase console and so next one let's create a register now button and let's create a register page and be able to create a user through our app okay and in the following video let's try to do some oauth sign in like google sign in apple sign in and let's try to get this authentication part down in our mobile apps so i'll make sure to link all of this code below so you guys can take a closer look at it so play around with it and let me know if you have any issues i'll try to help out but other than that thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace